Yeah, let's move on to uh, group five. This is uh, the climax of Act Two, uh, William Biff at Boston. Will you stop laughing? Will you stop? Aren't you going to answer the door? He'll wake the whole hotel. I'm not expecting anybody. Why don't you have another drink, honey? And stop being so damn self-centered. I'm so lonely. You know you ruined me, Willie. From now on, whenever you come to the office, I'll see that you got right through the buyers. No waiting at my desk anymore, Willie. You ruined me. That's nice of you to say that. Gee, you are self-centered. Why so sad? You are the saddest, self-centeredest soul I ever did see. So, come on inside, drummer boy. It's silly to be dressing in the middle of the night. Aren't you going to answer the door? The knocking on the wrong door. But I felt the knocking. And he heard us talking in here. Maybe the hotel's on fire. It's a mistake. Then tell them to go away. There's nobody there. It's getting on my nerves, Willie. There's somebody standing out there, and it's getting on my nerves. All right, stay in the bathroom here and don't come out. I think there's a law in Massachusetts about it, so don't come out. It may be the ro new room clerk. He looked very mean. So don't come out. It's a mistake. There's no fire. To knocking, uh, the knocking is heard again. He takes a few steps away from her, and she vanishes into the wing. The light follows him, and now he is facing young Biff, who carries a suitcase. Biff steps toward him. The music is gone. What did you answer? Biff, what are you doing in Boston? Why didn't you answer? I've been knocking for five minutes. I called you on the phone. I just heard you. I was in the bathroom and had the doors shut. Did anything happen home? Dad, I let you down. What do you mean? Dad. Before, what's this about? Come on, let's go downstairs and get you mounted. Dad, I flunked math. Not for the term? The term. I haven't got enough credit for the... For graduate, you mean to say Bernard won't give you the answers? He did. He tried, but I only got sixty-one. And they won't give you four points. Birnbaum refused absolutely. <laughs> I begged him, Pop, but he won't give me those points. You gotta talk to him before they close the school, because if so, the kind of man you are, and you just talk to him in your way, I'm sure he'd come through for for me. The class came right before practice. See, and I didn't go enough. Would you talk to him? He'd like you, Bob. Pop, you know the way you could talk. You're on. We'll drive right back. Oh, Dad, good work. I'm sure he'll change for you. Go downstairs and tell the cook I'm checking out. Go right down. Yes, sir. See the reason he hates me, Pop. One day he was he was late for classes, so I. So I got up at the blackboard and imitated him. I crossed my eyes and talked with the lift. Ha ha! You did. The kids like it. They nearly did, died laughing. Yeah. What do you do? The square two root of sixty-three is, and in the middle of it, he walked in. Hurry downstairs and. Somebody in here? In there? No, that was next door. Somebody got in your bathroom. No, it's the next room. There's a party. <laughs> Can I come in? <laughs> There's something in the bathtub, Willie, and it's moving. Ah, uh, you better go back to your room. They must be finished painting by now. They're painting her room, so I can let her take a shower here. Go back, go back. 
But I've got to get dressed, Willie. I can't. Get out of here. Go back. Go back. This, this is Miss Frances Biff. She's a buyer. They're painting her room. Go back, Miss Frances. Go back. But my clothes. I can't go out naked in the hall. Get out of here. Go back. Go back. Where is my stockings? You promised me stockings, Willie. I have no stockings here. You had two boxes of size nine shears for me, and I want them. Here, for God's sake, will you get out of here? I just hope there's nobody in the hall. That's all I hope. Are you football or baseball? Football. That's me too. Good night. Well, better get going. I want to get to school. To school first thing in the morning. Get my suits out of the closet. I'll get my valise. What's the matter? She's a buyer. Buy, buy, buy for J. H. Simmons. She lives down the hall. The painting. You don't imagine. Now listen, pal. She's a buyer. She sees merchandise in her room, and they have to keep it looking just so. Now, oh wait. Oh, all right. Get my suits. <laughs> Now stop crying and do as I say. I gave you an order, Biff. I gave you an order. Is that what you do when I give you an order? How dare you cry? Now look, Biff. When you grow up, you'll understand about these things. You mustn't. You mustn't overemphasize emphasize a thing like this. I'll see burn bomb first thing in the morning. Never mind. Never mind. He's going to give you those points. I'll see to it. He wouldn't listen to you. He certainly would listen to me. You need those points for the University of Virginia. I'm not going there. Hey, if I can't get him to change that mark, <laughs> you make it up in summer school. You got all summer to. Dead. Oh my boy. Dead. <laughs> She's nothing to me, Biff. I was lonely. I was terribly lonely. You, you gave her mama stockings. I gave you an order. Don't touch me, you liar. Apologize for that. You fake. You phony little fake. You fake. <laughs> I gave you an order. Biff, come back here. I'll beat you. Come back here. I'll whip you. I gave you an order. Hey, let's pick it up. Pick it up, Mr. Lowman. Your boys left with the chippies. They said they'll see you at home. They'll see you at home. Question first, because on seventeen o one, where Willie has that long, um, where he has that long, um, like little monologue, he says that um, Miss Frances has all that merchandise, and she has to keep, and they have to keep it looking just so. What is what does that really mean? Oh, on seventeen o one. Seventeen o one, where where Willie had um, after Paul. The fifth line. No, listen, pal. She's a buy. She's just a buyer. Uh huh. And she sees merchandise in her room, and they have to keep it looking just so. What does it mean? And who's oh, they? they are down. Th uh, she lives down the hall. Uh, uh -huh. They are painting. Uh -huh. You don't imagine. Now listen, she's a buyer. She ha she she's merchandising her room, and they have to keep it look uh, looking just so because uh, I guess that the painting will damage the, the merchandise, and that's why she comes here. Um, that's how I uh, interpret this. They are painting in uh, down the hall. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, I guess um, uh, or, or she, uh, his story is that they live in two separate rooms. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, well, um, I think from this passage, it's very obvious where 
where Biff and Happy gets their um, like instinct to lie all the time. Uh huh. Because the father lies. Yes. Uh huh. And yeah. Let Let me uh, first explain uh, more clearly. Um, here, I think the story is that uh, um, she has to be in this room because uh, the other room is painting down the hall. Yeah. So then the the merchandise has to be kept clean. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one lie. Uh, that Willie has. Uh -huh. Anything else? Um, and the significance of the stockings was that that um, Willie gives to Miss Frances. Mm -hmm. um, because in in Act One we saw um, Linda mending. She she was mending her stockings. So it's kind of a symbol of how hard life was for them and how they were really trying to make ends meet that she mm -hmm. had to she had to mend her own stockings instead of getting new ones right so but then Willie sends away new ones yeah. to the other woman uh -huh. yeah but what I don't understand is why um, how, how why why does Biff take it so personally that he has to jeopardize his whole future for it uh-huh yeah. this is a very good question yeah. What What do the rest of you think? Uh, I'm I'm going to give you two uh, a break very soon. I think uh, the other two groups. I'm sorry. Uh, could could we have your reading next time? Next week, maybe uh, group one and four. Okay, you can practice a little bit at home. <laughs> okay, and then you'll read next time. You know, uh, and then uh, after the discussion of this passage, you can take a short break. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is a very good question. What do you think? Um, I think since um, as a child, um, Biff always admired his father, mm -hmm. and he thinks that he maybe he's the greatest man in the world. And when he saw this in um, this episode, his whole dream kind of his his world kind of shattered and mm -hmm. trembled down. And um, maybe he he thinks that. Oh, um, the men I always m admire so much uh, turn out to be a fake. Mm -hmm. Then, um, what is all that he had told me? Is it lies also? So he might um, he might think that he mm -hmm. ha maybe he would just have no future or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I think. Uh, well, maybe you can ask of yourself. You know whether one another person can change your life, can change your attitude so completely and then you, you can give up on yourself just for one person. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Grace that um, uh, Biff uh, respects his father too much. You know, uh, he is too much of a role model for, his, for him, for Biff, uh, that uh, when the, the, the dream is shattered, uh, he has no role model, and then he gives up on himself. You know, I think that's one uh, one reason. And I think that the other implicit reason is uh, something that we'll find uh, towards the end of Act Two, and that is uh, Biff never likes the role the, ma the father uh, assigned to him. He never likes to be a salesperson. He likes to be out in nature, you know, uh, uh, be relaxed and uh, be. Uh, uh, not a uh, whistle and not uh, maybe taking care of the animals, etc. So he likes uh, the country life. He doesn't like to do business in the in the city. So uh, this event gives him uh, an excuse to not follow, to not take the path uh, his father has assigned to him. Okay. Um, but really, I think the uh, the other thing we need to consider, and that is what uh, the story he sa uh, he tells about himself at the beginning of Act One, and that is uh, after that he does go to uh, some lessons, summer schools lessons, uh, and he does try to take different jobs. So it's not like uh, he gives up on himself forever, you know, right after the moment. You know, he he tries, but he never persists in trying, and then he he easily gives up. So I guess uh, uh, maybe th uh, the two things are combined. One is uh, the the lack of a role model, and the other is uh, you know being forced to do something he's not really interested in, and that's why he goes from job to job and never being happy with the jobs he takes, because there is always a discrepancy between 
his view of himself and his father's expectation. Like when he's a cowboy, uh, maybe he likes doing that, but he's, uh, he knows that his father was look at it as a menial job, as a, you know, a, a job for nobody. And that's why he leaves jobs all the time. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from the group? Anything else uh, that you find uh, uh, interesting, uh, important from this passage? How about the woman? Vivian re read it very well. <laughs> okay. So have you found any uh, lines important about this woman? Is this woman just being flirtatious? Does, it, does she say anything uh, truthful about Willie? I, I think this woman is a secretary. Uh, she's called Francis. Uh, where do you get a name? I, I didn't. Um, where he, he introduces her to. Oh, yes, yes, yes. OK, yes. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about a woman? Um, she she constantly says that Willie is really self-centered. Mm -hmm. I think she's quite spot on with that because, um, like, with people knocking on the door, and he he says that he's not expecting anybody. Instead of um, there's um, like it's like if he's not expecting anyone, they he wouldn't want to see them. Uh huh. So right. He's being very arrogant uh -huh. and um, there is a part um, what is this? where at the bottom where he says that it's a mistake mm -hmm. um, with the stage direction it says that his his terror rising so I think it's like he knew which page on 1699 okay it's about halfway down the page uh -huh. And the st the stage direction is his terror rising, and he says it's a mistake. I think, um, like deep down, he n he knew that it would go things would go wrong, mm -hmm. like if he carried on having an affair. So, it's um, sort of like a foreshadow. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yes, right. Um, maybe he hears. Uh, Biff talking or knocking outside. Oh, maybe he's well. Um, the other thing is, uh, he says that this is against the law. So um, I'm not sure ab about what law. He might feel that uh, they think that he's doing prostituting. You know, okay. he's having a prostitute in the hotel. But I think it's also possible that he's lying again, because he he wants to make sure that Francis stays in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So he, um, after si mentioning the law, he even like tr um, says that it might be the new room clerk. Uh huh. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Grace. Yeah. Well, I think um, he's just making stuff up to make um, the woman um, scared and threatened to not come out of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, he mentioned that the room clerk is mean, so that he uh, doesn't want she to. Um, to face him or something. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, right. Um, but he, he does want to hide the fact that he's having a woman in the room, okay? So that, that is a part of himself which is uh, pretentious, you know, which is not truthful. Um, and also the woman saying that uh, what is self-centered is true in a larger sense of wor the world because uh, he wants this woman because he's lonely and he wants this woman because he needs connection. Like the woman says, oh, next time you can go, just go straight uh, to the buyers. You know, I'll introduce you to the buyers. So it seems that this woman is a secretary, and then uh, she can arrange for the salespersons to go see the buyers. Okay, so uh, this connection is important for Willie. Yeah. And then uh, on page uh, 19, uh, no, 1700, 1700, the last line, uh, Vivian, why did you say that's me too? What does that mean? You, uh, she asked uh, Biff, you uh, baseball or ba uh, football? And then uh, Biff said uh, football. 
And then uh, the woman, humiliated, angry, that's me too. Uh, because I think mm, men's play football and throwing it around. So maybe the woman think that she's just like this, throwing by Willie and other men. Yeah, being kicked around, being thrown around. Yeah, okay. But this is where the woman is uh, very uh, clear about her own position. You know, she's not self-deceptive as Willie is, yeah. Okay, uh, let's take a break. And after the break, uh, we'll finish uh, the discussion of Act 2.